How does Kohaku grow as a character? For as long as we've known her, Kohaku has always seemed like a mature character. She disciplines herself, takes care of others, and always stands her ground. So then what's her weakness? Well, it's actually that very same strength. Kohaku solves a problem by giving it her all, but as a result, her first response is to solve things with her fists. But after she starts helping Senku with his science, Kohaku begins to understand that there's more than one way to fight for a better future. In this analysis, I'm going to explain how Kohaku grows as a character and why she is the stubborn sister of Dr. Stone. Be warned that this video does contain manga spoilers. Before I get started, make sure to comment with your thoughts on Kohaku. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week in the next video. This week's comment comes from Dragon Ball Dad. Luffy would definitely be the world's worst employee. If you'd like more Dr. Stone and One Piece videos, then make sure to subscribe so you can follow along with each week's video. With that out of the way, let's look at how Kohaku contributes to the Kingdom of Science. Her obvious role, of course, is that of the fighter. Right off the bat, Kohaku shows herself as a fighter by taking Tsukasa head on, which, as you recall, was ridiculous considering Tsukasa killed a lion by punching it in the face. As Senku starts spending time in the village, readers learn that Kohaku has always been like this. There are lots of strong people in the village, but Kohaku is generally understood as the best fighter. This talent for combat can actually be traced back to her father. While Ruri was trained by her mother to become a priest, Kohaku seems to have inherited her father's skills as a fighter. But even though she was raised as a great fighter, Kohaku doesn't really fight for the sake of fighting. For the sake of comparison, let's take a quick look at Magma. Aside from Kohaku, Magma is the strongest person in Ishigami Village. As we know all too well, Magma uses his natural power to assert dominance over others. But this isn't how Kohaku uses her skills. Unlike Magma, who prides himself on his beastly strength, Kohaku actually hates when people talk about her this way. Anytime someone calls her a lioness or a gorilla, you can guarantee that person's getting some tough love. Kohaku resents these names because she doesn't just fight for the sake of fighting. Although she's a great fighter, Kohaku only uses her skills when she needs to fight for others. And this brings us to Kohaku's second role, that of the sister. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Doi, she's literally a sister. And you're absolutely right. Ruri began her fight against pneumonia from a very young age. While her father was deeply concerned for Ruri, he never bothered to care for her beyond the basic warm towel or cup of water. But Kohaku wasn't content just waiting for her sister to die. For as long as she could, Kohaku helped Ruri by bringing her hot spring water every day. If there was even the slightest chance this could save Ruri, then that was reason enough for Kohaku to go out and do it herself. She also fought Magma in the Grand Bout so that he couldn't marry Ruri. Kohaku didn't care that this would anger her father. Her only concern was making sure her sister would be safe. In both instances, Kohaku puts the health and safety of her sister before her own needs. Kohaku never considered the cost of her actions. Instead, she puts the well-being of others before her own needs. And as we see later on, this concern extends to all of her friends and family. The best example of this is when Mantle tries to convince everyone that Suika is drowning. It's painfully obvious that Mantle is full of crap, but as Kohaku puts it, she needs to save Suika if there's even the slightest chance that she's in danger. When Kohaku returns and Suika apologizes for ruining her chance to fight in the tournament, Kohaku says that she's just glad Suika is okay. Remember, Kohaku went out of her way to stop Magma from marrying Ruri. But as soon as Suika is in immediate danger, Kohaku puts Suika's safety before her desire to stop Magma. Like with Ruri, Kohaku does everything in her power to take care of Suika without considering what it will cost her. We even see Kohaku express concern for Mirai. When Mirai sees that Tsukasa is close to dying, Kohaku goes out of her way to comfort her, to convince her that her brother will be okay in Senku's hands. Here, we see Kohaku help someone she barely even knows. She has no reason to make Mirai feel safe, but she does it anyway simply because she cares about the people around her. No matter the person, Kohaku acts as the sister of the group by putting their well-being before her own. But this brings us to Kohaku's flaw. She's a great fighter, 
and a caring sister, but Kohaku is very, very stubborn. Whenever danger presents itself, Kohaku's immediate response is always to fight. She saw Tsukasa kill Senku, and her response was to try and eliminate him. She realizes Gen is a stranger, so she assumes he's an enemy and puts a knife to his throat. When she finds out Chrome is captured, she starts running to save him with no plan whatsoever. Regardless of the nature of the threat, Kohaku always treats problems as a fight. And this is precisely because Kohaku's problems have always been a fight. To save Ruri, all Kohaku could do was train and make the trip to bring her spring water. Anything else meant waiting for Ruri to die a slow death. All Kohaku could do was put her life on the line to save the life of her sister. Even worse, Kohaku could only count on herself. Nobody knew how to cure Ruri, and her father was actually against Kohaku's actions. Because of this, Kohaku came to believe that she could only count on her own abilities to solve a problem. Every problem is viewed through the same lens. Put your life on the line to save the life of others. Now, generally speaking, this is a reasonable principle to practice. Even Senku practices this by taking risks to save his friends. The problem, of course, is that Kohaku uses this principle to treat every problem like a fight. To paraphrase the common expression, she who is good with the hammer sees everything as a nail. But as we all know, every problem in life can't always be solved by punching it in the face. So then we have to ask, how does Kohaku overcome this stubborn nature? And the answer to this question comes in the form of a certain Ishigami Senku. Before she met Senku, Kohaku could only count on her own abilities. Her father wasn't doing anything to help Ruri, and Chrome's sorcery would never be able to cure Ruri's pneumonia. But when Senku rescues her, Kohaku sees his most admirable trait. Senku kept hammering away at the problem, one step at a time. He had an unwavering conviction. Here, we see Kohaku immediately respects Senku for his diligence. She respects Senku because his diligence in solving scientific problems is fundamentally the same as her struggle to save her sister. They each work towards goals by taking seemingly small steps, even when there may only be a slight chance of success. And it's precisely because they both practice diligence that Kohaku can finally place her faith in someone else's actions. Senku's diligence convinces Kohaku that, no matter how ridiculous his ideas might seem, Senku always delivers on his promises. And watching Senku build all of his inventions only reaffirms this belief. Now to be clear, Kohaku never really replaces fighting as her first reaction to a problem. Like I mentioned earlier, Kohaku tried hunting down Gen before Senku stopped her. And later on, Kohaku storms the Perseus when she finds out everyone was turned to stone. The important change here isn't her instinct, but her ability to count on others. When Kokuyo attacks Senku after he sees Ruri's reaction to the medicine, Kohaku stops him and stands up for Senku. Kohaku tells her father that she believes in science. More importantly, she believes in Senku. Whereas before, when Kohaku could only rely on her own abilities, here she puts her faith in the abilities of someone else. By watching Senku repeatedly fulfill his promises, Kohaku begins to understand that not every fight has to be fought alone. We see this growth in Kohaku near the end of the Treasure Island arc. When Senku says that there's nothing left from Byakuya but a few stones, Kohaku says that he couldn't be more wrong. She tells Senku that our hopes and dreams get passed down and polished, connecting us to the future. Here, Kohaku explains that we don't have to work alone to achieve our goals. Whether it's cola, cameras, or cures, we can put our faith in others in order to make progress. Of course, Kohaku is still the first one to pick a fight, but she's come to understand that she never needs to fight alone. Similar to the way Byakuya bets the fate of humanity on Senku, Kohaku realizes that problems are best solved by combining everyone's efforts and working as a team. At first, Kohaku believes that she has to carry the weight of her burdens on her own shoulders. But by working with Senku, Kohaku comes to understand that building a better tomorrow means having faith in the people around us today. This is the story of Kohaku. This is the story of Dr. Stone's stubborn sister.
And that's the end of this video. As you can see, Kohaku is a great example of why everyone should read Dr. Stone. If you enjoyed this analysis, then make sure to like the video. If you'd like more Dr. Stone videos like this one, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for weekly videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.